Gary, it's um, it's great to have you on the podcast today. How are you doing? It's uh, great to have you on the podcast today, Gary. How are you doing? Can you hear me all right? I'm very well, thanks, Adam. Yeah, thanks for inviting me along. No, no, you're very welcome. Yeah, I just kind of thought I'd start off by, you know, kind of asking you how you kind of got into what you do, because I see you uh, own a business called The Mind Zone, mm -hmm. and you do a few other things as well. Yeah, I mean, the, the Mind Zone is predominantly based around golf uh, and golfing mindset. So um, if you're a golfer, you probably would have heard of a guy called Dr. Bob Rotella, uh, American golf psychologist, worked with some of the greats. And um, more and more sports people, not just in golf, are getting very much into mindset, sports psychology. Um, so yeah, I dreamt up the Mind Zone um, a few years ago have a great deal of fun with it, get some great results. Um, I've also got another company, um, IMD UK, which goes back and, and I use mindset in all of that as well, Adam. But that's based on sales, negotiation, a bit of health and safety and fire, um, and all based around, in terms of mindset, NLP, hypnosis, mindfulness, meditation, call it whatever you want. Resilience is now the buzzword we're using. So. Uh, yeah no that's great and it's great that you've kind of like gone into like you know two kind of well kind of two, kind, you've got two companies that kind of work within that kind of same kind of area isn't it that kind of like niche where you can like focus on mindset and performance and they can kind mm. of probably interlink as well i think yeah it's, it's important to me mindset whatever you're doing is is vitally important um i can't think of anything out there that you're not using your mind for so if you wanted to be a top salesperson, um, you've got to have the right mindset to go out and do that. If you want to be the best sales negotiator or the best manager, you've got to have that mindset to want to do it. So it's probably quite an easy job for me to do because every job, um, every client, every customer, etc., that I, that I speak to, um, I know that they need a, a great mindset. Mm. Yeah, no, exactly. And I think like mindset is kind of where it all kind of starts, isn't it? With like, mm -hmm. you know, pretty much anything and everything really, isn't it? Like, like when we first connected, you were talking about, we were talking about golf and sports. And we were saying that, you know, like I've worked in a golf club, um, mm -hmm. you know, nearby. And I remember seeing people who were stressed and there was this kind of weird atmosphere sometimes, especially during competitions. And, yes. and it was almost like you think, well, isn't golf meant to be enjoyable? And you see all this seriousness, and I, I understand it's quite serious, but it's like there was that kind of frustrated about it. There was like losing that kind of enjoyment factor in that sport. Yeah, absolutely, Adam. It's, I mean, I, I speak to a lot of people, certainly amateurs, and um, I'm even going to say professionals. You know, golf isn't life, uh, life or death. You know, if you um, if, if you go to a, join up with the, the army or the navy or one of the services um, and you're put into a conflict situation, yeah, the decisions you make could result in you and others a life or death situation. Golf ain't like that. You know, we, we do it for a bit of fun, um, but it's incredible the amount of pressure that people put on themselves. Um, again, not just in... in, in um, golf but any sport and i want to say life and, and given the year 2020 people sadly are putting so much pressure on themselves or they're having pressure put on themselves but of course and, and this is something i always say it's really up to you what you let in and what you sort of say no i'm i'm not even going there um you've got to be uh, one of my little lines i use is if you're not in control of, of your mind someone like me will come along and happily control it for you. Um, mm. and, and I don't do that from a power point of view, but, and I'd like to think I'm, I'm doing it for the best interest, but there's a lot of people out there, um, media, government, etc., that are uh, inflicting things on us and it's up to us how we choose to respond to it. Um, two things that, that you can change. Most people realize it's only one. Uh, is what what action you take you know you, you can change two things about you your physiology uh, and your psychology so the way you act and the way you think and that's that's all there is to it uh, and if you're not happy with results or doing whatever you're doing 
uh, if you're not getting the results, you're, you're not progressing or whatever it might be, Adam, then you've got to change one of those things, psychology or physiology. Mm. Yeah, no, exactly. I think they're really good points. And it, it makes me think back to, um, was it Tiger Woods a while back? He, he started working out and he noticed that he, he was performing better in his golf. I think, I think it was Tiger Woods or someone yeah, like that. Well, the, the, I mean, certain exercises. Yeah, the latest one uh, in the golf world is a guy called, uh, an American guy, Bryson DeChambeau, who was a successful golfer, but during lockdown, he spent most of the day in his gym, really bulked on a lot of muscle, and he's hitting the ball a phenomenal distance at the moment. Now, Adam, that's going to go one or two ways in the golfing world. Um, there's a lot of controversy, a lot of talk out there at the moment. Is it right to do? Isn't it right to do? The fact is, he's done everything within the rules of golf. So therefore, you, you've got to argue, yeah, he's doing the right thing for him. Mm. Um, he's hitting the ball sometimes sort of 380, 400 yards. There's other golfers, professional golfers saying, well, I can't get anywhere near that. Well, you know, it's, it's got to be a level playing field. Um, they're saying, well it, well, it is. They have the opportunity, if they want to go down the gym, bulk themselves up. Um, strangely enough, Bryson DeChambeau will not win every golf tournament, as, and you mentioned Tiger Woods, as Tiger Woods in his heyday didn't win every tournament, but he won enough. Mm. Um, and yes, you've got to have skill, whatever you're doing, you've got to have some skill, uh, but so much of the real achievers and successful people are the ones that have that very focused mindset and know what they want and know how they can pull on those those resources that, that we've all got within us. Mm. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I think, you know, like, it's so true, isn't it? Like, a lot of it, there's going to be a lot of controversy of people, you know, working out and that kind of thing. And I think, like, well, like, it's whatever works for that person, isn't it? And I think, like, you know, like, I can't, I can't, because the thing is, they might have bulked up, they, they might hit the ball and it might go, you know, yeah. a different way. And it's, it's, you can't just say because someone's bulked up, they've got more of an advantage. Because I don't yeah. know, it's golf, golf is absolutely, it's a game of consequence. Um, so Nick Fowler also said, um, I think when he was captain of the Ryder Cup team, he said, golf is a game of fractions. You know, you hit a ball off the club face one or two degrees out from where you wanted it to go. Um, if you're only hitting it 10 yards, then it's not going to make much difference. But if you're going to suddenly hit it 350, 400 yards, that one or two degrees makes a big, big difference. Mm. Um, so golf is certainly a game of consequence. But again, it's that the mindset of the, these elite athletes, um, people have always said, oh, it's, it's phenomenal. Yes, it is, um, but everyone's got that ability to have that mindset if they choose to, if mm. they choose to. And, and I know a good friend of, of yours and mine, um, Mark Dawes, who you've done a, a couple of podcasts with in the past. Um, one of Mark's stock phrases, and, and I, I use this myself, when people say, do you think this will work? Mark turns around and says, I don't know. Let's see. Let's mm. go and out. Uh, and people say to me on, on the on the golf course, if, if I'm doing a mine, mine's own session or if I'm doing sales training, negotiation, whatever it may be, and they say, do you think this will work? And, and I turn around, I, I bring my little inner Mark Dawes out and say, I don't know, let's go and find out. Because uh, that's the only way you're ever going to find out. Um, but sadly, Adam, so many people don't go and find out because they've got the fear factor of what if it goes wrong mm. rather than what if it goes right and you won't know it's going to go right until you try it mm. um, yeah. so it's, it's a bit of a catch-22 for many people yeah yeah no definitely i think i think like i said that's a really good like way of looking at things isn't it you know why not just kind of find out you know like, you're not going to know unless you try and yeah. yeah i think i think a lot of times you know people i think people ultimately kind of you know, got that wiring. We've all got that wiring and that negative voice sometimes. And I think mm. it's kind of being in tune with that kind of voice and kind of not letting that kind of negative voice mm. kind of, do you know what I mean, kind of diminish 
but I, I know exactly what you mean, Adam. But we're not born with that. Mm. You know, we're we're born with the, the sort of uh, fight or flight. Um, yeah, we're not born generally to fear the dark. We're not uh, we're, we're not um, born to fear ghosts or spiders or wasps or whatever it might be. Um, that's all learned behaviour. And where do we learn it? Well, generally we learn it from the people we're surrounded by. So from a very early age, we're surrounded by our parents, you would hope. Um, you go to school, preschool, playgroup, etc., and you pick it up from other people. And if you see someone in the summer, um, as soon as a wasp flies in, screaming and running away, you soon, soon pick up, well, that must be the thing to do. This, this mm. wasp must be an evil thing. Now, I'm not saying go and play with wasps, but... Yeah. You know, um, someone once said once that it'll only hurt you if you annoy it and I've never yet met anyone that who, who's got a hobby of annoying wasps mm. but we, we learn this behavior to be fearful of things um, and I honestly believe it holds us back in our lives um, you know I'm not saying be reckless and, and gung-ho and let's go and do this and you know we're living in in the middle of strange times in 2020 mm. um there's a lot of opinions out there there's a lot of fear and i know people that if you're walking down the street without a mask on they cross over the other side of the street um i know other people that walk down the street without a mask on um don't don't really uh, don't tend to worry about it um but where is all that fear coming from media belief systems um and your little peer group the people you're mixing with mm. that's where it comes from um but it's yeah you're absolutely right it's such an interesting area yeah no definitely and i i agree with you and i i i kind of like seeing that when i've worked in restaurants and hotels you know like in the summertime mm. you get wasps flying around and people you see some customers and they'll be chilled and they'll be drinking their yeah. champagne or whatever and um you know they're just kind of like my god there's someone i just ignore it or stay still and some people just freak out and it's and i i used to be that person who used to run away and kind of freak out but then i was like well i think i saw something it was like well if you freak out you're all getting hotter and they're attracted to heat so you're going to get more wasps kind of coming towards you so it's kind of like doesn't help anyway but i think it, it's important like you said how to recognize you know how you react to things and you know why you're doing kind of like what you're doing if that makes sense and mm -hmm. Like you said, a lot of people kind of wrap that fear, don't they? But they they do come back to it, and I think the the art of of having a happy life is knowing how to overcome that fear. Um, and I'm not going to sit here and convince people that that it's easy to do, but it is achievable. Um, mm. And you know, pe people have different goals and motives for for existing. Um, you will have heard this, I'm sure, many times, uh, and, and I'll ask people on a on a training course, um, what makes you happy? And, and do you know what most of them tell me? What's that? Money. Mm. Every, everyone apparently wants to be a millionaire or win the lottery. And, and I tell Hannah, say, will that make you happy? Oh, yeah, yeah, it'll make me happy. Why will it make you happy? Uh, well, I can buy things. Okay, so you just won 20 million on the lottery. Um, what are you going to buy? I'm going to buy a house. Okay, two million pounds. You've got 18 million pound left. What are you going to do with it? Oh, I don't know. And you tend to find that money doesn't make people happy. It's what you can do with that money that makes you happy. Mm -hmm. And time and time again, you can go to different parts of the world and you can see people with no, absolutely no money at all. And yet they're happy people. Uh, and sadly, I also know multi-millionaires, and there's a lot of celebrities, multi-millionaires, that have taken their own life um, mm. because they weren't happy. Um, mm. So does money make you happy? No, I don't think it does. Maybe that's just my mindset. Um, mm. You know, it, it makes things comfortable, and I get that. We, we've got bills to pay. We, we want a roof over our head. Um, but there's a lot of fear at the moment with job losses and redundancies and, and that, mm. that sort of the way that the economy is going, people are fearful of what's going to happen. Mm. Um, I also happen to think there's going to be a load, a massive amount of opportunities coming out of this, you know, 
And if you think about the fact that we're sitting here now, if you go back in your life 24 hours, we're actually a day closer to realizing those opportunities than we were yesterday, Adam. We've yeah. spoke for 20 minutes so far, and we're 20 minutes closer to those opportunities realizing themselves than they were when we started talking. Mm. Um, now it's, it's just whatever mindset you choose to adopt. Yeah. No, I completely agree with you. And I think like as well, like I think like money and that kind of thing and what success is, is, is a very personal thing to each person, isn't it? And mm. I think, like you said, like you could have a lot of money, but um, it's like, if it's not kind of aligned with your like belief system, you, you know, you're not going to have be able to hold on to that money because you might feel like you're, I don't know, not some people, feel, you know, like who win the lottery, like you said, spend all of it because yeah. they, their belief system, they might feel like they're not worthy of having that money. They might not kind of know the value of it. And a lot of people sometimes, you know, they're just buying, I think we've all done it, you know, you buy stuff and then, you, you know, you've got that kind of short term kind of happiness. We, oh, it's great. Yeah. I've got this new jacket. And then two weeks later, like, oh, I've got four jackets now or or whatever it is. And I think like, it's kind of, I think with money, like you said, it does help you do certain things. And it is that kind of sense of stability, you know, and reassurance that you've got like a base there. And I think you know, that, that's important in life, isn't yeah. it? To have that kind of base. But I think with, with money, I think like if you're continually buying things and you're doing things, and I think over time people are going to realize that, it's not actually those things that are making them happy and it's it's much deeper than that isn't it and really you know you, like Absolutely. i said you hear a lot of celebrities who go downhill even though they've got a lot of money and a lot of status quo that kind of yeah. thing yeah i mean adam there's there's people in in history and and i like for really simple things very simple things i'm, I'm a simple person you know i'm i'm not um not one of these that is what we would regard as a genius but I know what works for me and, and I'd like to think I know what works for a lot of people. Mm. And I remember many years ago, John Lennon, uh, one of the Beatles, uh, sadly shot, unbelievably, 40 years ago in December, wow. uh, 40 years ago, 1980. Um, but one of his quotes was when he went to school, mm. his, um, his teacher said to him, what, what are you going to be when you grow up? And John Lennon apparently said, happy. Mm. And his teacher said, no, no, no. He said, she, she said, you don't understand the assignment. And he turned around to her and said, and you don't understand life. Mm. And I love that quote from John Lennon. You know, what's, why do people do anything? You would argue it's to become happier, to make mm. them happy. Why do I play golf? Because it makes me happy. Mm. Why do I want to get better at golf? Because it makes me happy. Why do I want to do this? Why do I want to do that? Because it makes me happy. Why do people go on holiday? Why do people go and eat certain foods in a certain restaurant with a certain group of people? Because it makes them happy. Mm. Um, and for me personally, everything you do should have the ulterior motive of ultimately making you happy. Mm. Now, I, I confess, I'm, I'm not a huge lover of paperwork. Yeah. I really detest paperwork. <laughs> you know, put me in a in with a, a group of people that we can have a chat and a bit of training session, and I love it. Yeah. Tell me, I've got to sit down for a day to write a course or whatever, and and I I struggle with it. Mm. But I've trained my mind now to say, okay, I know it's a necessity for me to go and do the training, to be in front of people, to do this. Mm. That's part of the route that I've got to take. Mm. So I, I train myself, right? Dedicate. I'll go and do that. Because I know there's an end result that will make me happy. Yeah. Does that, does that make some sense? Yeah. No, I love that, and I I can relate to that in some way because it's like, like you said, you know, with the course side of things, you know, in, in able to do that course to have those connections, you've got to kind of do that back end mm. stuff to have that, and it's that kind of you can't have that without this, and you know, this yeah. without that, can you? And I think yeah. I I um kind of sometimes like it, you know, like with emails and chasing up things sometimes. Mm. You know, I have a, you have a lot to do and you're like, oh my God, there's so much. And it's kind of like, if you have that kind of mindset towards it, it's going to drag. Whereas yeah. you kind of see it, well, if I don't respond to X, Y, Z, I, I can't have X, Y, Z here kind of thing. Yeah. 
Absolutely. I mean, put, let's put it into an, uh, an analogy here. If you're going to build a house, you know, why do you want to build your own house? Well, because I want to design it and I want it to look beautiful and I want a nice garden and I want this and that. Okay, well, you've got to design that house then. You've got to put foundations in that no one will ever see. But you need to put good foundations in there so that you can build the first course of brickwork and you build it up. And now I don't like building houses, but I like living in a nice house. Mm. So it's a it's a means to an end. Ultimately, that should come out that you're, you're going to be happy in whatever house you build. That's a little mm. analogy there for you. I mean, you, you can make yeah. analogies out of anything. <laughs> um, but I, I would just like to see a world with that, that people could realise that they have the ability to change uh, within. Mm. You know, mm. yeah, I'll, I'm happy to come along and I'll help them, etc. But everyone has that ability to change um, if they want to, mm. if they want to. And I'd love to see a world with people that are more confident, that have less fear, that mm. have more self-esteem. Um, that, if you like, turning around after a course, and people say, do you know, I feel more confident, I've got more self-esteem, I've got this, I've got that. Mm. The more of that I can do, that then makes me happy. Mm. So I'm quite a selfish guy. I'm doing all this to make me happy. If you think about it, <laughs> <laughs> but but it's like the thing is, you're you're you know you're getting that satisfaction from it, mm. but yet you're providing value at that same time to other people. So they're kind of taking something mm. from it, aren't they? And they're going to get happy. They're going to, yeah. you know, kind of um, benefit and and develop themselves. And I think you kind of got to kind of have that or have that kind of um, place in mind, haven't you, in order to kind of to be able to provide that. Because yeah. it's like, I think it's very obvious if someone doing something and they're not providing value or they seem to be provide, providing value and they're doing it for like monetary needs and not that kind of happiness, isn't it? I think that's what yeah. I recognise, you know, sometimes because I think, you know, in the past you know, many years ago, I probably, you know, wanted to get my needs met and that kind of thing. And then over time, you kind of, you like, like you said, you kind of learn about what makes you happy and the, that value is important. You yeah. Know, that you provide. Yeah. And I, I think it's important. People often misunderstand me, Adam, when I say money is not important. Um, because as you've, you've highlighted earlier, and I hope I said this, you know, yeah, I understand we need some money, you know, mm. um, to, for us to live, we want a roof over our heads, we want a nice bit of food on the table, but I, I don't urge people to go out and, and find stuff that they love doing. Mm. Um, you know, I, I know far too many miserable people in the world mm. that when I say to them, and I probably wind them up a bit, I say, um, how long have you been doing your job? Oh, 40 years. And I, I wind them up, I say, you must really love this job then to do it for 40 years, you must love it. And they say, I really hate it. So, well, why are you doing it? That's all I know. And then I just put a little, one, one at the end, I say, well, don't worry, I said, you've done it 40 years. I said, you'll, you'll be dead soon. Yeah. And they look at me as if to say, well, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, you haven't got to do this for eternity. You will die, you know, and you haven't got to do that job then. Mm. Um, and I, it, yeah, it, worries me really the amount of people out there that are doing stuff that they hate doing mm. um i'm very fortunate I, i've always loved what i'm what, what i do mm. if i don't like it i change i've, I've done various things in my life mm. um as i look back on my life now i start to realize why i did certain things in a certain way um did i always get it right absolutely not um mm. but the only way i was going to find out if it worked was to go and do it and, and mm. some things work and some things don't um, yeah, there we are. I, I I agree with you, and I think like you know, like what makes someone happy is like I said, a very personal thing, and what makes you happy is going to be different to the next person, and mm -hmm. you know, like like me as well. But I, I think, like you said, people need to try different things out, and mm -hmm. it's like the only way. Almost, I mean, I, I'm 26, and luckily, you know, I found something that makes me happy. But prior to this doing this and coaching and things like that. I've tried different jobs out, different courses. And, 
you know, I've had that ability where I kind of listen to myself. Mm. I'm doing it for myself. I'm not listening to what my parents are saying or anyone else. Yeah. Um, I think that's another thing as well. You know, listen to yourself, isn't it? And being able to make those decisions where you're like, no, I can change my mind. Let's try X, Y, Z. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, I feel sorry for people who are kind of stuck in that place where they're doing something they don't enjoy. But like you said, it's possible, isn't it, to do that thing you don't enjoy, but then on the side, do something else. And then when you find that, leave that. And I think a lot of people are scared, aren't they? They're scared to go out of their comfort zones. And I think that's kind of normal to feel scared. Yeah. Yeah. Once you do it and you've done it for X amount of time, it's not scary anymore. It's like like when you probably first play golf, you know, it's like, oh, what do I do? What, you know, who's watching? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, you're, you've hit the nail there it's, it's about finding what makes you happy if i go back in my life um when i left school uh, adam my, my my father was a builder um he was wasn't a bricklayer wasn't a tradesman he was he was a, a foreman on a building site and he used to work horrendous hours you know he'd be up probably six days a week at five o'clock in the morning i remember as a young child he would come home um, probably about six in the evening, fall to uh, have his dinner, fall asleep in the armchair, and that was it. And but he used to love his work. He had this mindset. He used to love his work. Uh, and even when he retired from building, he still went and did odd jobs, etc. You know, sort of local gardening jobs, putting up fences, a bit of concrete, and what have you. But I remember him always used to say, he said, "Whatever you do." Don't do what I'm doing," he said. "It's a hard unless you really enjoy it. It's a hard job." So that made my mind up. I didn't want to be a builder. And when I left school, people told me, bearing in mind this is back in the eighties, they said, um, "Get a job in banking or insurance. It's a job for life." Okay. Well, I wasn't particularly educated, but I thought I'd have a go for this. So I started working in an insurance company, nine to five. And my job was to move a pile of files from there to there by the end of the day. When I come in the next day, Adam, there's another pile of files there. So I'd move them from there to there. And it was mind-numbingly boring. And at about five to five to five most days, you look at the clock and you put your pen down, you put your files away, and you walked out. I then, the time I was 18, I found myself a job in a pub and it was the best thing I ever did. Uh, I loved working in the pub because it wasn't like work. All your mates come down to see you, you chatted to people. It was fabulous. And in the end, I was doing sort of six, uh, maybe six nights in, in the pub, working during the day in the office, six nights in the pub. And for an 18, 19 year old, I had quite a bit of money because I wasn't going out spending it. So when I did go out on my night off, I could, I could afford some nice places, which was rather nice. Hmm. Um, I suddenly fell in love with the hospitality trade and, and it, it was about seeing people. Um, and again, you make connections in life. Steve Jobs said, uh, you can't join the dots of life up looking forward. You can hmm. only look, uh, join them up looking back. Hmm. Why did I enjoy the pub trades and hospitality so much? Because it was social. It was hmm. seeing people. And I then went from there, got a job with a brewery, selling, selling beer. What a, what a dream job. I think I was 21 years old at the time. And I was going round into pubs, clubs, restaurants, selling beer, knowing that the next week when I went back, they'd sold that beer and they wanted to buy some more. Happy days. Mm. So that was my, that, that was my sort of um, brief career history. Got into sales training. Uh, then moved totally into training and I discovered a long time ago how powerful the mind was and the mm. fact that if you smiled at people most people would smile back um, and I got told I got a really cheeky smile a cheeky grin for a youngster and so I started smiling at everyone and people started smiling back and you're miles away from me now Adam but you're smiling on your face it's quite weird yeah <laughs> um, so if you can connect with people, um, you can then start to influence people. And I used to sell, uh, I, I won loads of stuff as a salesperson. 
Uh, but then I got into training. I love the training aspect of it. Um, so I moved totally into training. And since those days of nine to five in an insurance company and being in a pub selling beer and, and what have you, I've really understood how the mind works. Got into NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Um, met some wonderful people along the way. Hypnosis, which still fascinates me. Uh, I love hypnosis. Um, everyone's got the ability to go into trance whenever they want. Um, but people find it's a it's a weird old thing. Mindfulness, meditation, all these things. You start banning these words about and people, oh, no, I'm not into all that sort of stuff. Mm. So we're going to brand it as something else and I'll call it something else and it'll work. Um, yeah. But yes, yeah, it's, it's all good fun. It's all good fun. Yeah, no, that's it. And I think like, it's great in what you said about, you know, that experience, the experience that you had, you know, like when you was like a teenager and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I, I can definitely relate to that. Like I'm pretty extroverted, you know, like as a person socially. And I think like when I, I fell into restaurants when I was like 16, my dad's a chef. Mm -hmm. And I started going, going into waitering. And like you said, there is a, it almost like when you're kind of confident in it and you kind of find your feet, it's, it's quite enjoyable because you're meeting all different people and you're able to yeah. deal with situations that you probably won't encounter in an office. Yeah. Like is that, you know, with chefs, with people who, you know, might be well, drunk or pissed off and that kind of thing. Let's so be honest, really most, most, most chefs that you know, most chefs that I know are, are raving mad. It's, it's a prerequisite for being a chef. And I know if any of my, my friends that are chefs listen to this afterwards, they know exactly what I mean. Mm. You've got to be a certain a certain animal to be a chef. Yeah. Um, but highly skilled, highly talented people. Mm. There's, there is definitely that to it. I mean, we, we had, where well, I used to work in one place, we had like six head chefs and four managers in the space of like four months because mm. there was a lot of pressure and it was during summer. And we had people on, on agency coming and going backwards and forwards. Um, and yeah, there's, there's a lot of pressure and there's a lot of, uh, you know, things you need to deal with. But I think in that trade, you can grow so much because mm. you're literally thrown out of your comfort zone. And, yeah. you know, like you might have two people who don't turn up to work and it's you and one other person. I remember it was me and my two colleagues because the manager got sacked and he was basically mm. kind of co-running this hotel running all over the place and i think there's a you know that's the, when it was hard i kind of thought to myself well i'm meeting all different people every day mm. and that's kind of what kept me going yeah you, yeah your people are interesting you just don't know who you're going to meet or who that person knows absolutely and it's incredible when you work in i mean i, I know how the how hard the hospitality industry is incredibly long hours um sadly they're getting a rough ride at the moment in, in mm. my opinion mm. Mm. From, uh, from from the government and the, the support might be available. But um, in terms of the hospitality, um, we used to finish a shift and we were absolutely worn out. But do you know what I used to love, Adam? The doors are closed, we've finished glass washing, etc. And we just sit around a table and have a beer mm. and chew the fat, you know, just talk about anything. And that was a lovely, lovely time um you were yeah. absolutely worn out but it, it was fantastic yeah absolutely fantastic no i definitely agree i think that's what i miss about it as well there's mm. that kind of side to it whereas most of the jobs is like yeah done cheers cheer, see you and the ways that it's like you're kind of like a family unit yes um, yeah, yeah i was just gonna to like round up as well like um do you have any favorite books that you like to read any favorite books um, well of course i mean i've got to say my good friend mark dawes Quantum thinking is an essential read. Mm. Um, there's certainly in the golfing world, um, there's any of the Bob Rotella books are really good reads. Um, mindset, well, I mean, there's just just Google something um, on, on mindset. Um, we talk mm. a lot about uh, growth mindset. Um, a guy that, um, that does a lot, lot, lot of presentations or was before COVID uh, a guy called Steve Head. He, Steve is worth looking up. Uh, a good guy. Um, but now there, there, there's some really good 
speakers out there and I'm always happy to go along to, to conferences, webinars, uh, Zoom meetings, whatever, because I'll always pick something up from somewhere that I can use. Why do I pick it up? Because it makes me happy. Mm. You know, it, it, it all comes back to that. Um, if I can find a little story um, that I can use, that I can pass on, it makes someone else's life happy. Brilliant. Happy days. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that, that, that's no. how... Uh, that's how it all works. Yeah, no, exactly. And it's so important to do that, isn't it? To kind of, you know, to read good content and, you know, kind of consume the things that, you know, make you happy and going to make some kind of difference to your life as well. Yeah. And uh, I think as well, like, do you have any role models professionally or personally, like, or mentors, like, growing up or even now? You just well, say? growing up, I suppose, um, I mean, in, in the golfing world, um, as much as I admire Tiger, um for, for what he did tiger woods um sevi sevi balasteros uh because mm. he was different from everyone else um and his visualization his mindset um again anyone that's into their golf google some of the um some of the sevi videos they're quite unbelievable but he just had that that, that attitude of i want to go and go and have fun go and enjoy it Roy McIlroy, um, a tremendous talent. Yeah. Um, nowadays, I still think talent-wise, skill-wise, Roy's got it. Mind-wise, I think is sometimes lapses. Um, mm. So I'd, I'd love to do a bit of, if Roy's listening to this ever, Adam, I'd love to do a bit of work with you, Roy. Yeah. Uh, no, no problem at all. Um, I, I think in life, and, and strangely enough, Adam, I did a podcast last week with... Um, with a friend of mine, he's a uh, or was an Olympian, went to the Olympics five times, and uh, we were talking about who your idols were, and it's normally people within your profession that were really successful. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose when I look, both both my parents, um, sadly no longer with us, but both my parents um, laid those foundations mm -hmm. from a very early age, and. I never grew up with pressure of you've got to do this or you've got to do that. Subliminally, subconsciously, call it what you will, both of my parents always said to me when I was growing up, I don't care what you do for a, for a job as long as you enjoy it. Hmm. And and I think those words um, sort of resonate with me even in my life now. And I say my friend who I uh, spoke to last week, I said, who was, who was your motivating factor? He said, my mum. You know, you've, you've got all these um, superb um, celebrities, um, successful people, but often you would hope it comes down to the, the grounding and, and the education that your parents gave you from a very early age. Uh, and then I hope I pass that on. My, both my kids are, are grown up now, but you hope you pass that on so that they can then pass it on mm. yeah no I, I truly believe in that and i i love that and i and i agree and i think it's like kind of like that base of where it starts isn't it as well you know how you mm. kind of are as a person and being grateful and, and looking up to the people who kind of you know still that kind of bit of wis wisdom yeah. you know in you as well oh absolutely without doubt without doubt and um uh, where, where can people find you on social media or your website that kind of thing well i've got um i've, I've got a couple of websites uh, one's down at the moment for maintenance because i've, I've used this last lockdown to uh, to update it but i'll um i've got a couple of websites which i'll if i email over to you yeah um, i can put it in you can maybe put some links i'm on facebook uh i'm on linkedin i'm on instagram i'm on twitter you know uh, i'm i'm on the phone you know, if, if anyone, and I'm happy to give my number out, if you want to phone me up yeah. um, and you want to you want to speak to me, um, I'll speak to you. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, it's it's about, because you, when I say you, whoever's listening to this, mm. whoever wants to speak to me, um, if I can ha solve a problem for you, strange enough, you'll also solve a problem for me because mm. it's something that you give me that I'll learn from it. Mm. So, as I say, selfish. You know, I'm only doing it for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
No, it's awesome. It's awesome, Gary. But um, I, I'll definitely put your content and your details in, in the uh, bio of this. And yeah, fantastic. You know, I'll definitely, I'll definitely share what you're doing and you know, and all that as well. Excellent. No, oh, you're Excellent. welcome. And been, maybe, maybe we do a a version or a, a podcast too, um, yeah. in in a few weeks or a few months or whatever, um, and we go on to chapter two then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, of course, I'd be happy to. Sounds be good. Brilliant. brilliant. Yeah. Super. Yeah, no, yeah, Gary, but no, have, have a great day and I wish you all the best in what you're doing. I will do. Thanks very much indeed, Adam. You take all care. Best. Thanks. Thanks.